Hello Scorpio and greetings from the Astrology Chalet in Rosendale, New York. I'm Eric Francis Coppolino, your astrologer for the next hour or so here with the somewhere in between reading for Scorpio. That's 2024 plus astrology. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being a client, a customer, a reader. It is good to be with you here on this cold snowy day in Rosendale, New York. It's um, kind of an old old fashioned upstate New York winter. Uh, lots of snow this week and uh, temperatures I'm hovering around uh, 20 degrees and uh, got the fire burning and thought I would try doing a video series in a different place for a uh, for a different feeling uh, for a different year. And, um, and here we are. And uh, some of you may know that I'm I'm not uh, I'm not the world's uh, biggest adept at video. Uh, I'm not I, you know I love sound design, I love still photography, but it's it's never particularly easy for me to put the two of them together. And um, uh, I I just uh, I I do my best. There are those just some natural let's see like this, and everything's backwards. Video podcasters who just seem to jump into the territory and know exactly what they're doing. And I'm always like squirming around and hesitating. But all that said, um, we're here to talk about your astrology and uh, the, the, the underlying theme of your astrology and w what would make it relevant, meaningful, productive and challenging is that Scorpio is a fixed sign. In some ways, Scorpio is is the most fixed of the fixed signs because Scorpio is so deeply rooted in in people's in in the emotional body and uh, and and how we feel, and it also represents primal instincts. It it goes much deeper than the level of cognition, the level of thought, the level of ideation, and into a a, a realm where uh, the 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 most uh, fre frequent, frequently encountered and deepest taboos are contained. And so there's not really a lot of rational thinking that, that people do when they're in the realm of, of taboos. It's, it's almost all uh, a, a form of uh, re reaction and um, kind of, uh, yeah, reaction, knee-jerk. And so the one of the realms of Scorpio is that of bringing the irrational up into the up into the rational. This is not really layers, but uh, uh, fr from that instinctual level into the intelligent and intuitive level. And there's a constantly that that frustration going on with Scorpio. And the, and the and the you know the question is um, which which kind of perception governs your thought process what what is it that drives you what is it that motivates you what is it that uh, gu guides you or drives you forward and the chances are that there there is something deeply instinctual there is something that does not lend itself easily to being put into words uh, though you've been under some pressure in recent years to learn how to put things into words and how to express yourself and make the, the, the words your own words and not the words of other people. And that's that's starting to change, but Pluto is still going to be working its magic. Uh, so I want to start with two, uh, well, mostly two elements that are on the fixed cross that have been influencing you for a while and that relate to this underlying matter of fixity. Uh, there's three major kinds of houses, uh, signs. If you, don't, if you don't count the elements, which are another matter, cardinal signs are the beginning of the season where there's an energy surge, where everything just seems to change all at once. Uh, and then the, the fixed signs are at the middle of the season where there is a peak of the energy and the season is in kind of full flourish and full bloom and the mutable uh, signs are the ones where one thing gives way to the next and and the mutable signs also they have that sense of flow and movement but then there's also often a juxtaposition between fixity and cardinality in the 
in the mutable signs. Yours is a fixed sign. Uh, the, the fixed signs tend to uh, gravitate toward and thrive in a spirit of stability. The problem is there's not really a lot of stability in the planetary realm. We, we are living in, in times when the elements are acting upon us, and human psychology is acting on us, and all of the things that people do to hold down their feelings, to hold down their, um, their, their, uh, their instincts, their needs, their, their emotions, their desires, their passions, tend to bottle up and then erupt all of a sudden this is this is not this is not specific to anyone's sign this is not specific to anything except humanity and so the stability of the world is is disturbed by the ongoing uh need people seem to have to suppress themselves to hold themselves down and then they kind of turn themselves into bombs and they can be disease bombs and they can be emotional bombs and uh, what what I'm uh, one thing I'm proposing is that that which is of a fixed nature needs to find flexibility and that's a lot of what this reading is about is the finding of flexibility um, the, the the, this need is is a ba a basic need from even from applied engineering, which is to make a structure with integrity. It's necessary that that structure be flexible. Uh, large skyscrapers can sway ten feet in the in the, in the wind if you if you measuring the distance at the at the top floor. They they are not uh, just r rigid. If they if they were rigid they would blow down and so there has to be an element of, uh, of of sway particularly in these newer style buildings that are more of a of a, a grid work than uh, than basically a, an old pile of stone as frank herbert said of the castle caladan in dune um so one of the things that the this time is teaching you is flexibility mutability and there, there's an element that I don't think I've mentioned. I draw it into a lot of charts. And, and that is, um, that's an element in Scorpio called Apollon. Apollon, there it is. It looks like a combination of Jupiter and Gemini. Gemini, as they say in England. Jupiter and Gemini. And Apollon is uh, one of those planets without a body it's uh it's like it's called hypothetical it's a trans-neptunian point not trans-neptunian object these these date to the early 20th century and uh and they they're kind of strange and and interesting and in my experience they uh they turn up uh they they turn up for important things and they've i've, I've learned that they've turned up for such important things that i always pay attention to where they are at least i i do most of the time and it's impossible to miss the fact if you know what apollon is and your ephemeris can, can cast it which thanks to tracy delaney mine does the uh you have apollon in scorpio and this is gonna it's very slow it moves uh it moves about 0.37 uh of a degree every year on average so uh apollon takes five well about 60 years to go through a sign 50 60 years this is a while and it, it represents a very helpful principle and the principle is the combination of jupiter and gemini so it's double well triple mutable because jupiter rules pisces jupiter rules uh sagittarius and then uh and then gemini is implied in the symbol so this is this will come up with years and years ago i still haven't figured out exactly how but i've inherited them and this is the principle of expansion it is a super jupiter and it is also about art commerce and science it generally represents improvement and enlargement uh, of the uh, of of the very best of human activities now you can put it in combination with other other forces and factors and you can put it into a conflicting position with something that represents stricture and restriction and then you get tension but 
those come and go and Apple on just sticks around for a while. 